Welcome, my name is Dr. Caitlin Ibrahim, a cardiologist at the Lankana Heart Institute, part of Mainline Health. I am here today on behalf of the Women's Heart Initiative to talk about high blood pressure and stroke. I'd like to start off by talking about hypertension or high blood pressure. So what is blood pressure? Blood pressure is the force of blood pushing against the blood vessel walls. And hypertension or high blood pressure means the pressure against the blood vessel walls in the body is consistently too high. And when blood pressure is too high, it increases the heart's workload and can cause damage to the blood vessels in the body. What do the numbers mean when we're measuring blood pressure? The top number is called the systolic pressure. This is the pressure on the blood vessel walls when the heart beats or when the heart squeezes. The bottom number is called diastolic pressure. This is the pressure on the blood vessel walls when the heart relaxes. There are several different categories of high blood pressure. Normal blood pressure is less than 130 over 80. Mild high blood pressure or mild hypertension is when the blood pressure is 130 to 139 or the bottom number is between 80 and 89. More moderate hypertension is when the blood pressure is greater than 140 over 90. And what we call hypertensive crisis, or when we recommend someone get emergency medical care, is when the blood pressure is greater than 180 over 120. So what are the symptoms from high blood pressure? Sometimes a patient may not even feel that their blood pressure is high at all. Sometimes when the blood pressure is high, patients can feel headache, changes in vision, nosebleeds, chest pain, breathlessness, or fatigue. These are the most common symptoms from high blood pressure. What are the risk factors for high blood pressure? Age, so as we get older, we have a higher risk of having high blood pressure, obesity, tobacco and alcohol use, diabetes, family history of high blood pressure makes it more likely that someone will develop high blood pressure in their lifetime, physical inactivity, and a high salt diet. Black patients have a higher risk for hypertension and tend to have hypertension at a younger age. And actually the highest risks of hypertension are in black women. According to the American Heart Association in the United States, about 58% of black women have high blood pressure compared to only about 41% of white and Hispanic women. And death rates from hypertension related causes are nearly double that of white and Hispanic women. And it's important to take steps to try and reduce this disparity in women's health. There are also some unique risk factors for high blood pressure in women that I'd like to touch on. Preeclampsia and gestational hypertension are associated with a higher risk of future hypertension and cardiovascular disease. And unfortunately, hypertension and hypertensive disorders of pregnancy are more common in black women making it important to recognize and address these risk factors down the road. We've found though that blood pressure reduction is especially important in young black women. There was a systematic review that looked at black women aged 30 to 54 and found that blood pressure treatment reduced the risk of stroke by over half and all cause death by about 34%. So that ties into why high blood pressure matters. So hypertension is called the silent killer. You may not feel it, but it is causing damage to the blood vessel walls. This can lead to things like heart attack, kidney disease and kidney failure, eye problems, complications during pregnancy, vascular dementia, and stroke. And hypertension is the most common modifiable risk factor for stroke in both men and women. So I'd like to switch gears a little bit to talk about stroke. So what is a stroke? A stroke happens when a blood vessel in the brain either becomes blocked or bursts, leading to bleeding. This causes a lack of blood supply to the brain tissue, and the brain tissue begins to die, leading to a loss of brain function. Strokes are classified as ischemic, meaning a blockage in the blood vessel, hemorrhagic, meaning bleeding into the brain tissue, or a transient ischemic attack, or TIA, which is stroke symptoms with no long-term damage. What are the risk factors for stroke? High blood pressure, as I mentioned, is one of the leading risk factors for stroke. Risk factors like obesity, high cholesterol, diabetes, smoking and alcohol, sleep apnea, physical inactivity, abnormal heart rhythms like atrial fibrillation, 
blockages in the carotid arteries of the neck. In women, birth control pills increase the risk for stroke. A family history of stroke also increases risk. And what I'd like to touch on today is that race is also a risk factor for stroke. Women also have specific risk factors for stroke that are different than men. Preeclampsia, gestational diabetes, oral contraceptive use, postmenopausal hormone medications, and changes in hormonal status are all risk factors for stroke that are specific to women. Additionally, there are other risk factors that are stronger or more prevalent in women who have stroke. And those are things like migraine, atrial fibrillation, diabetes, and hypertension. Stroke is actually more common in black women and it's important to recognize this. So black patients in general have the highest rate of death due to stroke. Stroke is the third leading cause of death among black women and they are more likely to die from stroke than white or Hispanic women. Black women have higher rates of traditional risk factors for stroke like high blood pressure, obesity, and diabetes. And also in the African-American population, sickle cell disease is more common, which also leads to an increased risk of stroke. The bottom are some statistics from the American Heart Association showing that one in five women has a stroke annually and about 55,000 more women than men each year have a stroke. And on the right among women, black women have the highest prevalence of stroke. And finally, I'd like to touch on the signs and symptoms of stroke because spotting the signs could save a life. We use this acronym called FAST to recognize the symptoms of a stroke. F is for face drooping. You ask the person to smile and the numbness of the face will make their face look uneven if they're having stroke symptoms. A is for arm weakness. If you have someone hold their arms out and they're unable to keep one of their arms up, this is concerning for stroke symptoms. S is for speech difficulty. Words may be slurred or garbled uh, as someone is having a stroke. And T is for time. So it's time to call 911 if you see any of these symptoms because the faster someone can receive emergency medical care, the better their chance at recovery. So again, for stroke, spotting the signs could save a life and act fast. So the take home messages from this presentation today is that hypertension is the silent killer. Know your numbers to help lower your risk. Black women have the highest prevalence of hypertension. And it's important to meet with your doctor to discuss these risk factors and to get blood pressure under control. Things like eating right, keeping a healthy weight, cutting down on salt, keeping active and following regularly with your doctor can help combat high blood pressure. Women also have unique risk factors for hypertension and stroke. If you're a woman who's had preeclampsia or gestational hypertension, it's even more important to follow with your doctor to help control risk factors down the road. High blood pressure is the number one modifiable risk factor for stroke. And we know that black patients have the highest rate of death from stroke. If someone's having a stroke, spot the signs and think fast. 